Thanks for your patience. Thanks for your interest in this talk today. My colleagues and I, Sarah, Bernhard and I, my name is Julia, we will talk about a project that we made together, a joint project. And we actually created um, a runoff river prototype together. Since Verbund is a hydropower energy supplier in Austria. Um, actually, um, especially in the field of renewable energy, like hydropower, solar power, and wind power. And maybe you would just want to say a few words about Enviso. Yes, hi everybody. Um, Enviso is a security uh, consultant company uh, from Europe. We are mainly focused on financial and uh, technology um, sector and also the governmental and critical infrastructures. So um, I want to use the moment since this was a team effort to give a shout out to a few people. So great thanks to Alex, Moritz, Olaf, Nicolas, Vanessa and Patrick. Thanks, Sarah. Okay, so as I said, it's about a prototype that we built or specifically in Viso did a lot of the creating process. And we chose a runoff river power plant, hydropower plant to visualize the effects of a cyber attack on such a plant. So it's not only like a visual awareness tool, it's also supposed to be um, a forensic training tool. So what also is included in this ICS framing range. <laughs> okay, I hope you can still hear me. <laughs> Um, okay, but um, in fact, we um, really try to also include a forensic training in the ICS firing range that has more than, I think, 10 modules, I think it's 15, and Bernhard will get into that a bit later, but you can really investigate a forensic training in how the cyber attack on a runoff river power plant worked. Motivation and project idea. Thank you. Um, so what was the motivation for two companies like us to create such a prototype? So for Verbund, it was especially that we are critical infrastructure. Um, we are a really large power supplier in Austria. So of course, OT cybersecurity is like one of our biggest priorities. And since all of us three are from this section, we really wanted to do an innovative project together. And um, what actually is also one of the most motivational parts for this project was that Verbund is planning to build a really big cyber security range focused on OT in Austria, in Styria, at a local site of a plant. And we really want to get all the OT specialists there from Verbund, but also externals to train there and to get their cyber security knowledge up. So first we wanted to have a prototype before we really built a really big cyber range. That was one of the great motivations. Do you also want to get into that? Okay, so for Enviso, our main motivation is to um, strengthen the security resilience of our customers um, by building realistic attack scenarios um, that, actual, uh, that's rep that, that represent actual OT cyber threats. So we do this either in red team assessments or as in this case, we're building a realistic training scenario for the um, um, different OT environments has faced different challenges. Therefore, it was very important for us to create a tailored training approach uh, that actually fit the requirements previously described by Julia. Having a visual and practical approach, like in the cyber range, um, can uh, can help to. Uh, Okay, can help to make things more tangible and therefore to raise awareness. Uh, is the microphone still working? Maybe I try this one yet. Sorry. Um, and finally, um, if you look at the current OT threat landscape, you can see that the, that the things are getting worse. And therefore, it's even more important to have proper training capabilities at hand to increase the um, detection of. Um, response uh, readiness of the people that actually have to deal with cyber incidents on site. Thanks, Sarah. So, as we said, let's summarize it. Two things were the main objectives for this project. It's awareness building for people who maybe only know a little bit about cybersecurity, but also a forensic training for specialists in the field. Next slide, please. 
So um, what is really important to us, as I told you, us three are from the field of OT cybersecurity, so we're not in operational field. Um, we're not working directly in our um, power plant, so we need to include the knowledge from internal colleagues, but also from manufacturers to gain really a good understanding of how um, an ICS firing range could look like an abstracted model of a hydropower plant, since it's not exactly a realistic one, but as close as possible. And one of the really biggest inputs that we received from internal colleagues was, of course, as we have, I think Verbund has already over 130 power plants in Austria, um, we really need to have a control room where all the measured data comes together and everyone can monetize the data that comes here and see if everything's all right in the plant itself. And we realized this kind of control room within an HMI on the ICS firing range where you can also control the range in itself and you see all the measured data from the power plant and you can also give an input as to say control the wares that is also included in this prototype but also for example you can raise the water levels and um, yeah so that was one of the main important inputs that our people gave us and we really tried to include it to make it as you know um, real as possible Next, I want to give you some, please, next slide. I want to give you some hard facts about the ICS firing range. As you can see, the project had a duration of around one year. One of the challenges was that our team is in Austria, Bernhard and my team, but Enviso is in Germany. I think most of them were in Frankfurt and we were in Vienna. So, of course, we had quite a big span. Um, and many or actually all of our meetings were remote meetings. So that's also a challenge. Bernard will get into the challenges um, later a bit, but um, it's not so easy since we could not get together and build on it together. But I think it still worked really well. And um, what I also think is really cool is that we had a lot of people in this project. So now you're just seeing us three, but as Sarah mentioned at the beginning, it was really a team effort. We had over 30 people involved. We had students from the university in Vienna, the Technical University in Vienna, who really programmed the cyber attack for us. And um, Enviso did the part of going into the construction. And that's why I want to give the mic to Sarah, because she will get into the construction and logical construction part now for you. Yeah, thank you, Julia. So now we're getting in the more technical part. So as you could see in the previous slide, the cyber range consists of two layers. So on top, that is the slide that you can see now, is the scenario and visualization layer. Below that, we have the electric cabinet with all the technical compo components uh, inside. Um, the scenario and visualization layer um, um, has, at first, um, the modulated hydropower plants. So we have a river, of course. We have head and tail water. We have a turbine building, and we have the weirs. So we have one. A twin wear for the normal operations and we have, we have one emergency wear. Since you cannot look into this little building um, and to make things more tangible, uh, we also added um, the HMI to the, to the cyber range and also um, a model of the turbine including the shutters that actually control the water flow that hits the turbine. Okay, next slide please. So, now you can see the electric cabinet. Uh, here we have at first a few basic components as for example power supply and get general safety and controlling equipment. So on the upper uh, left we have the contactor and the electronic circuit breaker that handle electric faults. Uh, additionally we have the PSUs that um, provide 5, 12 or 24 volt to the different components of the, of the cyber range. And below that we have the terminal blocks that are used for the distribution of the power. The heart, for our, the heart from our cyber range um, is a network of uh, programmable logic controllers uh, and Raspberry Pis um, that are orchestrated to emulate um, electromechanical and hydraulic processes. These PLCs are the decision-making brain uh, of our firing range. Um, to make a realistic scenario, we, do, we actually implemented um, commonly used uh, uh, PLCs, uh, specifically the Siemens Seacam A8000. Um, the Raspberry Pis serve as remote IOs for these PLCs, and in the little box on the right bottom, you can see um, 
uh, there are the I.O. drivers for the Raspberry Pi to actually drive the stepper motors of the Vias. Above that, in the upper right corner, you have, we have the Siemens Box PC, and the Siemens Box PC is used to drive the HMI. So, please, next slide. So, tying it all together, how does this work? What is the logic of the cyber range? So, as I mentioned before, we have the PLCs and the Raspberry Pis that are connected via Modbus. Um, we have the HMI that is connected via S7COM with the PLCs. And the sensors and actuators are connected via I2C and GPIOs with the Raspberry Pis. If I talk about sensors here, then I mean um, the opening level sensors for the wheels and also the shutters of the turbine. Okay, you may have recognized this. We have a hydroelectric power plant, but we don't have water at the moment. So that's actually bad. So maybe there's something missing. Um, if you want to create a model, including real water, this is always kind of error prone. We have a lot of electric here, so we decided to go a different approach. Uh, for this, um, we added a simulation layer to the, to the logic of the, the cyber range. In this um, simulation layer, we have a simulation program, and this program actually um, emulates um, the water level of the headwater of the power plant. Um, in combination with the actor data, so the sensor data retrieved um, from, the, from the Raspberry Pi, um, this, this program calculates the new water levels and publishes these water levels um, to the MQTT broker. The Raspberry Pi's MQTT client then is then subscribed to these values, so retrieves all, all the updates of the new water levels and forwards these water levels to the PLCs. Okay, nice. Now we have water, but still only logic. So you can still see no water on our, on our model. Okay, so another step is necessary, and therefore we added another machine, the visualization machine. Um, the visualization machine is basically a projector that is uh, built tied on top of our model. Um, please, next slide. Um, there you can see in the, in the middle picture, you can see the projector that is um, on top of our model. And uh, in combination with our SYN client, um, they also uh, consume, the, consume the water levels um, from the MQTT broker and project them um, on the model. Um, how did we do this? To actually create the images for the water, we, there is a Unity game running uh, that contains uh, that, that surface structure represents the surface structure of our range. And additionally, we have a blue layer in this um, Unity game, and its height is increased and decreased as needed to represent our water levels. Okay, nice. Now we have a working power plant, um, but to actually um, create training scenarios for this uh, cyber range, we also need network infrastructure. So please go to the next slide. The network infrastructure for the firing range is also split up into two parts. So we have the IT and the OT network. The IT network con um, hosts multiple virtual uh, machines that emulate a classic office environment. The uh, IT network is completely uh, virtualized. Um, the OT network um, contains two networks, so a virtual and a physical one. The physical one um, hosts the PLCs, and the virtual one uh, hosts an uh, virtualized Active Directory. Okay, nice. Now we can actually start implementing attacks here in our cyber range. Um, and if you look at the current OT incidents, then you can see that actually a lot of OT incidents start in IT. So that is also the case for our attack scenario. So a very classic one, the attacker sends a phishing mail uh, to the victim, uh, which urges the victim to uh, download uh, um, an executable from an attacker-controlled web server. This um, executable surprise contains an C2 implant, and after execution, the attacker has an um, initial foothold in the IT network. Further, poorly configured workstation security allows the attacker to um, dump credentials, escalate privileges, and finally uh, move laterally and compromise the jump host and the control technology DMC. So actually very bad. Um, why is this bad? Well, the jump host in the control technology DMC is used to manage the PLCs. So it's um, used to uh, reprogram the PLCs in absolutely a place where you do not want to have unauthorized personnel. So, but it's even getting worse. So the attacker starts enumeration of the network, dumps the active directory, and further um, analyzes which servers are accessible with the currently owned privileges. 
Uh, unfortunately for the power plant, unfortunately for the attacker, he is able to um, to access the next cloud data store. So, what is the next cloud data store and why is this bad? Well, the next cloud data store is used to host the project files for the PLCs. So that's actually very valuable information for for the attacker, um, since the project files contain the logic of the PLCs. And uh, well, the PLCs control the power plant, so not too nice. Um, attacker is happy, is exfiltrating these files uh, via the previously established C2 channel, uh, analyzes it, modifies it, and re-uploads the files to the da next cloud data store. And what happens next, and why this is a problem, Bernard will tell you. At the next stage, as an OT operator, I took the project file, deployed it on my PLCs, and the horror is starting. So uh, immensive flood is running over the uh, water power plant and also the environment. Um, next slide. Uh, training and DFIR. Um, we, we have separated into 15 labs, which are separated in three main parts. The first main part is the analyzing part. The second part is uh, see how an attacker is working on the environment and which tools they are using normally. And also we use uh, OS typical forensic parts, so we will show the people who are working on a water power plant uh, what can we see, what is a security engineer seeing, and what can he see in real life. Uh, and also, um, we get into deeper of the Siemens toolbox, which we use to program the logical units, and uh, we also do the analyzation of the files from the toolbox. Next slide. The lessons, the lessons. Ah, um, the lessons learned. Um, these are the heavy part because the ICS fire range is a bit bulky and heavy. Uh, we heard before it's um, a lot of weight and a lot of metal in it. Um, also, the most important part is to create uh, easy to use and also good resilient backup and restore solution because if we do some trainings we should be really fast in restoring and deploying and backupping the situation where we can do the live trainings on it so it took us a long time to create um, consistent ESXi backups in combination with the graphics and also the Raspberry configuration the noise um, noise is really important because um, it's not the best choice to took the first switch which you have in your depot. Normally we have a Cisco Catalyst switch from an old environment, so it was really noisy, it was active cooled. So uh, we changed the switch to a passive cooled switch, so everyone who is trying such a project use as most as you can passive components because they sound really loud. Um, model building, yeah, model building is not a technique, it's also a bit of art. So you had to design the mountains and you had to design the cows and so on. So a typical Austrian environment. The PCAP size during the analysis and for the training is also important because not everyone is happy to handle a lot of gigabytes from PCAP files. And this is the next part to analyze them with T Shark. Normally, normally in the security we use T Shark, um, but not every OT operator is familiar with T Shark. So we had to switch to Wireshark, which is more convenient for everybody to use. And yeah, so that's all. Um, for the toolbox, what is happening in the second part of the file? because the attacker is uh, manipulating the toolbox file. Um, the toolbox file, the new one, is uh, displaying the target values as um, the real values. So um, the target values will shown on the HMI and seems to the operator everything is fine. And um, on the other side, the toolbox is sending zeros to the wires. So, um, the wires will not function at the moment in during the attack. And this is why the flood starts. And the problem is normally you have the HMI 
the operator which is working on the HMI is not directly connected or has no visual view to the water power plant and then, yeah, that's all so for now. Are there any questions so far? Because um, we also have a short video um, where you can see what happens. Okay, um, it's Um, yeah, um, this is a short overview. Uh, here you see the top of the wires and the mountains. Um, I had to cheat a little bit. Um, yeah, here are the mountains. So we created a typical Austria environment to make it more home feeling for the uh, students. Here are the wires, which are 3D printed. This is uh, the landscape, which is getting flooded. Uh, in the back, you can see the turbine, which is a Kaplan turbine. So it's also realistic to create. It's also important to create a realistic Kaplan turbine. Yeah, on the left top, you see the HMI. And here is the ICS component. So here you can see the Siemens ICS, the P8, uh, A8000, and also the Siemens computer. So we used everything, or we tried to make the model as near as a real water power plant, so normally Siemens component will be used in this environment. Yeah, it is mobile, so you can bring it from point A to B. Yeah, so are there any questions so far? Okay, then thank you. And as I see that there are some people waving, uh, feel free to contact us and chat with us about the range and we can give you a bit more details than just the 25 minutes that we have here. Thank you.